Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to have a look at the latest from the live radar run through the UKV, have a look at the precipitation and the temperature over the course of the next five days as it is remaining fairly unsettled further north and westwards but drier and calmer further southwards with temperatures generally around average or above average for the time of year but nothing too much going on in the next five days or so. But as we head into early next week, as we'll see on the mid to long range models, we could be on the cusp of a bitterly cold spell of weather, but we could also be on the cusp of an absolute model failure from the GFS. Now, we have been looking at the models over the last few days, and yesterday they were very much on board with potentially pulling in an easterly wind. Now, the GEM and the ECMWF definitely were less bullish, but did pull in an easterly wind. And in today's runs, they build that high pressure up over the top of us, but do struggle to get it towards Scandinavia, which this sort of pattern they're showing now is sort of the middle ground that we were saying yesterday that could happen. Now, that would bring probably drier and probably cooler weather as well with a slack easterly flow and plenty of frost and fog, but nothing particularly cold. However, the GFS is still on board with a bitterly cold spell of easterly winds, a pressure pattern very reminiscent of the beast from the east back in 2018. Looking at the moment, the air mass probably won't be anywhere near as cold if it did come off, but it would be really chilly. Those temperatures will be well below freezing overnight and most likely in the day, and you'd be seeing widespread snow. Now, the GFS and its ensembles are very much going for that idea, whereas the GM and the ECMWF plus its ensemble members are going more for just high pressure over the top of us, cooler air masses, but nothing spectacularly cold. And this division in the models comes in around five, day five, day six time frame. So by the time you're watching this, this evening or into tomorrow, the models could have solved it. But at the point of recording this, we're still very much on a split pattern. The overwhelming idea is that we will be somewhere in the middle um, and that will be very difficult to solve because it could mean we could be quite cold in the southeast but mild to further northwards. So we'll just have a look at what the current scenarios are and we'll see what likelihood we think when we'll have a look at the ensemble members as well. So do remember if you enjoy my videos make sure you like and subscribe and remember to follow me on Twitter as well, the link's in the description. So if you start on the live radar you can see this split of unsettled and cooler weather further northwards and westwards and slightly milder and drier further southwards and eastwards so you can see a bit of a weather front pushing in at the moment again nothing too heavy some patches of moderate to heavy rainfall but mostly it is light rain with quite a bit of cloud around a bit of wintriness over the scottish highlands as well with some cooler air digging in but again, not too unusual for the middle of winter, seeing snow over the higher ground. So again, nothing too much going on. Further southwards, it is pretty much bone dry. As I'm recording this, around half one, you can see a split in the temperatures, pretty mild in the south and the east, cooler further north and westwards, but still most areas are average to above average, um, with these yellow colours mixing in temperatures around that 10 to 12 degree mark. But that's because we've got the wind coming in from a westerly at the moment with high pressure sat to our south, low pressure sat to our north. The pattern into the weekend and early next week is for that high pressure to try and break northwards. And that's where the uncertainty comes in. Does it break northwards and head towards Scandinavia and start to pull in all this bitterly cold air from Scandinavia and Russia? Or does it just sit over the top of us, bringing in a slack easterly flow with cold but nothing amazing cold air from central Europe. That is what we've got to decipher over the course of the next couple of days. So if you go now to the UK, the run through this quite quickly because nothing really is going on over the next five days in terms of anything major in terms of weather patterns. You can see at the moment over the course of this afternoon, look at the precipitation, just those showers and areas of rain pushing in from the west at the moment, a bit of wintriness over the higher ground, but again, nothing too crazy. Generally though, quite a cloudy feel out there. Beyond that, that weather front will continue to press and progress eastwards and potentially come quite heavy overnight tonight into the early hours of tomorrow. But by the time most are waking up tomorrow, it'll only be really raining across parts of northern and western Scotland. And in tomorrow, tomorrow afternoon, generally a drier day, a few patches of drizzle, uh, but again, quite thick cloud around trapped under the higher pressure. Through Thursday into Friday, you can see through Friday afternoon again, another very cloudy day, maybe a few breaks of sunshine further southwards and westwards, and a few showers further northwards, but again, nothing too much going on. 
as we head into Saturday, another weather front tries to push in, and it does bring some fresher air further northwards and a bit of precipitation along the weather front as it progresses southwards and eastwards, and that will spread through. But coming up against the high pressure further southwards, it comes up against that wall and sort of decreases in intensity just to an area of cloud. Through Sunday, again, a generally drier day with some sunshine in places, but again, nothing too crazy, and that's the same as we head into Monday. Now, if you put on the temperatures, you can see over the course of this afternoon, it's a generally mild day, 8 to 10 degrees in the south, maybe slightly higher, cooler further northwards. Overnight tonight, those temperatures won't drop away all too much, mid to high single digits, and by tomorrow afternoon, once again, temperatures around that 10 to 12 degree range further northwards. Uh, temperatures around the mid to high single digits. Again, pretty widely above average. Now, if we head into Friday, the temperatures again are pretty much above average, 10 to 13 degrees. And again, into Saturday, temperatures once again are above average from the south, cooler further northwards, and that will spread more widely into Sunday. Overnight frost for many areas in the north and west for Sunday morning and Sunday afternoon, widely back down towards average, 6 to 8 degrees as a cooler air mass runs around the higher pressure. And then into Monday, again, a frost in the south and the east with clearer skies, but again, turning slightly milder further northwards and westwards as mild air does push in. This is the turning point where we could see that higher pressure push further northwards and eastwards and pull in an easterly wind. And we'll explore that now, looking on the mid to longer range models. So if we do head over to the GFS and see what that is showing over the course of the next couple of weeks. Now you can see at the moment we've got a westerly flow coming in, a pretty strong westerly flow, but higher pressure will build in over the course of this weekend. This is the point where all the models really get to. High pressure sat over the top of us before uh, towards the weekend and start of next week with a bit of a northerly flow, and that's why it's turning colder towards the second half of the weekend. But it's what's happened beyond this. The GFS breaks that high pressure up towards Scandinavia and starts to bring a slack easterly wind in by early next week. And that easterly wind gets stronger and starts to pull a bitterly colder air mass in from the east by the middle to end of next week and it holds that easterly wind and goes into quite a historic spell by the end of that the high pressure retrogresses up towards greenland and we start to get plunged into a bitterly cold north easterly wind now it does look cold on that pressure pattern if you put on the air masses you'll be able to see how extreme this actually is Again, that easterly wind coming in by Tuesday, Wednesday, the minus 10 isotherm coming in in around six days' time on the GFS. Bitterly cold, and we stay under that minus 10 isotherm all the rest of that week. And we stay bitterly cold all the way into the following week before it starts to turn more into a northeasterly wind and look at that flood of arctic air extremely cold air mass and towards the surface we'd be absolutely frozen again you put on the potential equivalent temperatures again emphasizing how cold that air is just purples pushing in from the arctic and again that cold air will just strengthen over the top of us and keep us bitterly cold and again if we run back and look at the temperature deviation you'll be able to see dark purples engulf many areas in the south 10 to 12 degrees below average for the time of year absolutely freezing from this gfs six o'clock run today and if we even run it back until early next uh, the coming week and have a look at the two meter temperatures for the united kingdom again you look at the temperatures in the day for next wednesday minus two to minus four quite widely for england and wales for wednesday and into Thursday, you can see those temperatures don't get above freezing in many areas. And in the afternoon, look at that, 6 p.m. a week on Sunday, minus 5 through central England. It is absolutely bitterly cold. And yeah, absolutely locked in cold spell there. And we would be freezing. And you look at the dew points as well, just emphasising how cold and uh, how, where that air is coming from. The dew points widely minus 5 to minus 10 pretty much for a good 10 days. Now, this is a very extreme run. I highly doubt if we did see the easterly wind come off, it would go off like this. This is a historic cold spell. This not only would be very intense, but it keeps very cold air over the top of us for seven to ten days. So I don't think it would come off like this at all. But even if it came off something similar to this, or even kept those easterly winds in for a couple of days, we would still see quite big issues. 
Now, the big thing is the contrast to the GEM and the ECM WF. As I said, if we run to Sunday, you can see all models get to this point where high pressure over the top of us, cooler, northerly flow, but again, nothing ridiculously cold or anything uh, really westerly at this stage. But it's beyond that. The high pressure tries to make its way towards Scandinavia, but doesn't establish itself. And instead, it sits over the top of us and pulls in a slack easterly flow. And you can see relatively cool air is coming in off the continent with the bitterly cold air staying towards Eastern Europe and Russia. And beyond that, the high pressure eventually actually wanes towards day 10 and we pull in a westerly flow that the high pressure just sat over central Europe, not penetrating that 500 miles further northwards towards Scandinavia that it would need to to pull in a properly uh, cold easterly wind. So you can see how towards sort of day five, day six, it's extremely similar to the GFS, but it just doesn't establish that Scandinavian high up to uh, Scandinavian high further northwards. And again, keeps us settled but cooler. Now, if we have a look at the ECMWF, it does something quite similar. High pressure builds in over the next couple of days, and you can see it by Sunday. Again, high pressure over the top of us. It's trying to build towards Scandinavia, and it eventually tries and fails and sits over the top of us. A slack east to southeasterly wind by the middle of next week. Relatively cool, but again, nothing especially cold, with all of that colder air flooding into Eastern Europe and out towards Russia. And eventually, we pull in a westerly flow going unsettled and that high pressure just sat over eastern europe now so a huge pattern change from the runs here again all dependent on how how far far northwards that scandinavian high gets now i think the big consensus is that it will be somewhere in the middle but somewhere in the middle isn't particularly helpful because if it is a relatively strong easterly flow, it will be cold, even if we don't see it as cold as the GFS. Whereas if the high pressure is sat further southwards like these runs, it will be drastically different conditions at the surface, even though the pressure patterns are extremely similar. So we'll have to see what does happen. I do think it will be solved in the next 24 hours or so. I would probably side more with the GM and the ECMWF simply because the GFS is on its own at the moment. It has got a lot of ensemble support, but remember the GFS ensembles are coded the same way that the GFS operational run, just at a lower resolution with slightly different starting parameters. So it could be a bit of GFS bias here, building high pressure up towards Scandinavia, but it would still be quite a big model failure, as there are many people who do only just look at the GFS, um, and a lot of weather apps only get GFS data. So it is important that the GFS doesn't have these bias, and it could be showing up here a little bit if it didn't come off on the other hand it could be right or it could be more right than the other runs and it is sort of in the middle somewhere with an easterly flow and it would provide a bit of a failure for the gm in the ecmwf whatever happens here some of the models have had a bit of a blunder really with day five day six time frame we are normally pretty sure of the overall pressure pattern and the wind direction whereas Today, we really don't have a clue, um, simply because all the main models are in disagreement. But I will say the majority do have some sort of easterly flow, but nothing extreme like the GFS. More of just slack easterly flow, frost and fog, and maybe a few wintry showers in the far southeast. Now, if you look at the ensemble members, which really does put in the uncertainty here. Again, if the GFS operational run was all by itself... I would say it's an outlier, but we've got support from its ensemble members. You can see around five, six days' time, majority, probably about two-thirds, plunge us below the minus five isotherm, if not a lot colder from maybe about a third of the ensemble members, including even the thicker blue line, which is the control run as well. So it's not just the operational run being an outlier. It is on the very extreme cold end of the ensembles, but any of those minus five or lower would be cold and would produce wintriness. So again... As I said, we don't need something as extreme as the GFS operation run to get snow and cold weather in general, but that would provide something quite historic. So you can see there is still spread, so there is still uncertainty, but the, uh, the GFS ensembles here very much siding 
on an, quite a cold easterly wind. And you can see that emphasised from the dew points, all well below freezing, indicating a continental flow. And those getting down to minus 5 to minus 10 an arctic air mass coming in from the near continent and if we look at the two meter due uh, two meter temperatures you can see a lot of those runs are getting towards the low single digits if not towards freezing in around five six seven days time and keeping us very cold as well so the majority do have us turning quite cold next week from the gfs ensembles however compare it to the ecmwf ensembles and you'll be able to see a big difference you can see there, there are some cold runs in five or six days time, but nothing amazingly cold. A few down to minus six to minus 10, but maybe five or six around maybe 10% of the ensemble members, 10 to maybe 20% of the ensemble members. So as I said, nothing really that extreme. Most are around average for the time of year, above slightly or maybe slightly below, generally dry and probably a continental flow, keeping us cool, but nothing exceptional. And if you look at this straight up, just the ECMWF ensembles, you'd think that there's no cold spell at all on the cards. Whereas if you had to look at the GFS, you'd say we've got a very high chance of a colder spell. So again, this is very confusing. And one of these runs here and one of these ensemble suites is going to be drastically wrong i would side somewhere in the middle maybe more towards the ec and the f higher pressure sat over the top of our sort of pattern but we can't rule out the gfs the gfs has been right in the past uh, and we'll have to just wait until the 12z runs this afternoon which will come out around 4 to 5 p.m so around 4 to 5 p.m if we look at the gfs and it really backs off from the easterly flow and we see the east and the f at 7 p.m and the gm run around uh, gm gm run around half five six go for a slight easily flow or high pressure over the top of us, we will know that is the favoured scenario. But if this evening we see the more side towards easterly flow, then we may see a model blunder here from some of these runs. So we'll have to see what happens. It is quite extreme. This rarely does happen when we see this much uncertainty at day five and six. We can see a lot of uncertainty, but when it has drastic differences like this does have from being us putting us in the absolute freezer bitterly cold conditions with a lot of heavy snow to just dry and cool it is uh yeah very difficult and very frustrating as we would like to know what will be going on so anyway thanks for watching if you do enjoy snowy weather well fingers crossed we do see that gfs run come off but if you do prefer something more drier and more settled and not quite as cold and hope that the EC and the F and the GM sort of patterns come off more. We'll see what happens and of course I'll keep you updated tomorrow. So anyway, thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed, subscribe if you're new and I'll see you again for another video soon.